everyone. It's been a few days. I've been quite busy here behind the scenes doing stuff. There's a bunch of cool things happening in the near future, but you'll see. Anyway, thank you all very much for your comments and suggestions for how to fill in the blank slots that I had left in my case. It was super interesting to read all the suggestions that came from you all. Um, there were a couple of very popular suggestions dropping by, like people were really going on about adding distortion in there or filling it up with uh, some more CV sources and things like that, or going for stereo. There were even a couple of suggestions about tricks that I hadn't even considered yet, like doing sample and hold at audio rate. That's something I've never tried, so thank you very much whoever suggested that one. That was awesome. And in the end, I came up with a layout which I think is really gonna benefit me, which takes in a little bit from all of your suggestions, but makes it in a way that I think is really gonna work out very nice in what I have going on here. On top of that, I've made quite some progress on a couple of the other sections as well. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna show you what I did and let me know how you like it. Here's the current layout of the top case on top of one of the control sections. And I think this is a very, very fun layout. Let me show you what I've done. So let me start off with the X-Series Joe Oscillator. I think this is a golden combination, of course, with the backend filter over here. I placed a dual VCA in between in case I want to do some amplitude modulation uh, before I hit the filter. So this one, just putting it right in between those two is probably going to make me have short leads in here and then take whatever CV sources I want to do things with it before it passes on to the Macbeth on the other end of it. And that's going to be a nice signal flow, I guess. I placed a maths right here because I kind of agreed with the idea that I needed more modulation sources, more stuff to mangle and manipulate whatever's going on in the rack. So by placing the maths over here, even though I hardly ever use the thing, I think this one could provide me with a ton of fun um, in a lot of different kinds of utilities and setups. Over here, we have the entire mini mod voice, the one that I was talking about earlier with uh, uh, dual or triple VCOs even going into the ring mod, going to the Sonic 15. Um, and just the voice the way it is. I um, What I did in front of that is I placed a quantizer, this one over here, because I, can have, I have this idea in mind where playing a sequence um, in chromatic scale and then tapping out one CV line from that sequence and patching it through this quantizer over here before sending it to one of these oscillators, it's going to give me a lot of in-between harmonies and stuff like that, which could have a lot of, I don't know, some, some fun potential in the voice itself. So by placing this quantizer over here, it's easy and accessible for the rest of the entire voice. I think I'm going to be using it. I'm going to have fun with that. So I'm placing that one right there. Something else I did is I placed my vocal modulator between the two offsets over here, the, the way I was talking about it. And I placed it next to a random sampling module here, the one from Verbal's Electronics. And I think with this one, uh, the reason this one is here mainly is because of the shift register, which is a, a lot of cool functions and fun ways to play around with CVs. And I'm sure that I'm going to have a lot of fun from this and from the outputs that this provided for delays over here or even for the voices itself or filter openings and closings and stuff like that. I think this one sits here quite nicely. So I'm placing that one right there. I tossed in another dual VCA over here, simply for the fact that you can never have enough VCAs. And I think I should be following that rule very, very handsomely. So I have placed a VCA over here together with a molt because molts are always awesome. This is where the output module will live, uh, the NW2S one. And uh, then this top case is basically full. Yay. Here is my lead case. And the other case over there was really focused on sub and on bases and stuff like that. The things that need to hit direct and just kind of provide you that uh, substance that you need. This one here is geared towards making leads and making them sound interesting. So let me show you what I've got going on over here. Starting off, of course, I got my dual oscillator over here going into the backend filter, which is always nice. And well, that's an entire voice. Fantastic, nothing special except for that it's Macbeth, but this voice we already know. This second voice, let me show you the idea behind that one. Again, I'm placing 
a quantizer over here the same way that I'm doing on the other side because I think that this trick of quantizing one of the two voices is going to give me a lot of little harm, uh, harmonic interesting things that can be going on there. So this one is living here. I'd patch one of them into one oscillator, the other one, and then the sequence straight into the other. And uh, that way there's going to be a lot of uh, fun stuff happening there. The oscillators that I'm using are wired oscillators. I really like these. They're very... Yeah, they're 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 pretty pure. They're they're not too fat. They're definitely not thin sounding. Uh, they are uh, very pure in a way. I, I I really like the sound that comes from this. And these are actually some of my oldest oscillators. I bought these at the same time that I bought the Macbeths, and they've always stuck with me. I believe there's one of these oscillators that I have that's a little bit faulty. We'll find out which one. But luckily, I have four of them. So. Uh, two of the, those are bound to work out. So these are going here. Then my idea, based on the distortion and the stereo suggestions that came in, I decided, you know what, I'm going to place two full processors over here, um, corresponding with these two, and those full processors each will go into one side of this Morgasmatron, and um, I will be... Um, from there on, using this as a stereo voice with the um, uh, dual VC amp over here and this envelope um, from ACL, where I'm using one envelope output for the filter itself on a mix and uh, two of the envelopes for the um, uh, left and right voices, pretty much. That's more or less the idea, or I could even use one envelope and mult it and use it the same for both, but I think if I use two different envelopes then the stereo image is going to play around quite nicely, so that's that's going to be fun. I think this is going to be a very experimental voice in a way, or well, it really depends on how extreme I take it. I got my modulation sources over here, two triple attenuverters um, uh, on a, a Dalek modulator. I also have the DLFO over here, so there's plenty of CV to play around with uh, to get this voice as interesting as I possibly can. I'm not sure what's going to come out of this because I've never used the synth voice in this way before, but uh, that's probably going to be the fun, I guess. So this voice is going to be nice. Hey. Over here I placed a Beast chalkboard for octave switching and precision adding and stuff like that. I love this thing because it gives me octave switching over oscillators that don't have it, which is a crime. <laughs> All oscillators should have octave switches on them because it makes life so much easier. So these ones are for these two. Then I got a frames over here. Frames is a very nice way to place multiple offsets or whatever CVs that are going into it and using one massive knob to control all of, all of them. So this is a very nice buddy or very nice pair for whatever CVs are going into it or if I want to do more offset stuff and whatever's, then this is going to be a very nice one to use for that. So nice control. Over here, I got my trusty herb verb. Well, yeah, no explanation needed there because this thing is just awesome. And I dug up my uh, ZDSP because I have not been using this one at all. And I finally feel like it can have a place in my system now that I'm changing the layout of a lot of things. And there's still plenty of CV um, sources and stuff like that and ways to attenuate whatever I need from this to feed these units uh, in the process. So I think this is going to be a very nice half of the effects section uh, sitting next to the delay section on the other side. Um, right here, this is a dummy module. This is going to be another output module, the MW2S. So um, yeah, once I have those, this one is just going out and that's going to be it. Yep, I'd say this is a pretty fun little lead case. It's more distortion-y and a little bit more screamy and shouty and a little bit more experimental. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. So this is the second lead case. Let me know if you agree with my decisions. Now, as some people have read in the comment section in the other YouTube discussions, I was not entirely sure what I was going to do with the Symphonion, where I was going to place that unit, but I do think that I found a nice way to give it um, the support and the modules it needs to really shine. So let me show you the start of my polyphonic district. And I think this is going to be pretty damn awesome. Here, let me show you. Here it is, the bottom half of my polyphonic district. 
And there's a lot of things going on here, but a lot of this is duplicate functions, actually. And all of this, you should basically see it as one massive stack. Here, let me show you what I mean with that. What I have here is a quad VCO. This is just four VCOs, which all have their own individual uh, one volts input. They have their own individual modulation inputs. They also have a group input for the entire thing, which is awesome. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. They have a one volt for the entire group, which is fantastic. And they're nice and handy because they're small, fit nicely together. It's precision VCOs made by Dupfer, which well, I'm a great fan of what everything Dupfer makes. So yeah, this is one building block. Now from here on, it goes into um, a quad VCF, which is just four low pass filters, which connects uh, to the VCOs. They go into uh, uh, the VCA and the ADSR, which is over here, connects to uh, the VCA as well. And then I have four outputs, which all go into one mixer. And that mixer has one output, and this one output represents four voices. That's pretty much the idea here. These rows are all uh, exactly the same. Like, this is four voices coming out of one mixer. This is four voices coming out of one mixer. This is four voices as well. And they all have their own envelopes and VCAs and filters and all that stuff, because... Yeah, you can just mult out one sound, but then it's it's not going to be interesting. They all need to have slight imperfections to really get interesting harmonics and to get interesting sounds. So by having all of them be slightly different in how they respond and how, and how they behave, you get very interesting and thick stacks and thick sounding uh, voices at the end of it. The idea is that I continue this all the way up so that these three rows have the same thing. Like, what you can see here, I have all the tools I need for more of these voices. Like, right here, for example, this is another quad VCO, and then I got one more right here, one more right here. Basically, what I'm saying is that this case and this row all the way up here, this is going to be 24 voices, and they all are with the same oscillators, same filters, same VCAs, and all that stuff, but it's 24... Um, uh, voices, which are all pretty much identical, but still all have their own separate controls and their own filters and their own signal path, which means that there's a lot, a lot of room for slight imperfections, which makes it all sound very thick. Now, the idea from there on is that I take all these six rows of voices, pretty much, all in groups of four, and I put them into the performance mixer over here. I needed a proper mixer to get, uh, to get everything under control. And ultimately what I want is two outputs from this entire stack when I need it, or just individually uh, take all of them. But over here what I can do with this performance mixer is then send out the entire master of this stack, or to varying degrees to individual channels, and send them to, for example, this uh, phaser over here, like the, like the next phase, uh, or go from the next phase into the finalizer EQ, and uh, from there on send it outwards and away. Um, but yeah, there were a couple of things that I had in mind with this, but I'm basically thinking like, okay, what are the kind of things that really sound nice with big stacks uh, of chords, like big stacks of voices, and then I'm thinking in this direction of things that will really make um, this entire voice section shine as much as I can. So that's why I went for the phase over here, or the EQ uh, with reverb and stuff and everything, or I also have the EOS over here, which... Well, yeah, I think it deserves a shot on this section. I think that's going to be nice. I also have a PH8 over here, which is a little bit random. I It doesn't have to really be like um, a four-phase generator, but it also functions nicely as uh, a bunch of LFOs. So this one can sit over here, and I can tap out all kinds of things from this one to go to the rest. Same for the tides and the molts and uh, all that stuff. I tossed in the Borg filter over here to do some serial filtering as well, or even parallel, depending on the situation. And I think that all this can really make very nice pads or just massive chord stacks or fun things you can do with a ton of synth voices. So I'm going to expand this all the way up. There's going to be more interesting things to do with these stacks of voices. Um, but yeah, this is basically the start of my polyphonic island. To control all these voices, I am using the third of my pecking order uh, units. 
the other two are right over there. And this one is really just meant to control everything that's going on over here, you know? So all of these CVs will be sent out to these modules over here. I may have to add in a couple of molds to make the most out of that. Could even swap these two out over here, I'm not even sure. But um, pretty much this thing is going to control all of these voices so that I can uh, manipulate the hell out of everything that's going on there. Fun fact, this module was designed specifically for this purpose. To control lots of filters and open a bunch of filters with one knob like this. And this is where the Symphonion comes into play as well, because I think the Symphonion loves polyphonic stuff. So this is probably going to be the best place to uh, to leave it. And from here on out, I can basically just treat this as four or six voices and take the CVs out and send them to these modules and have an entire section of voices play out one of these parts. And then if I want to change things, I can quickly do it over here. I can have this follow whatever's going on over there. And this is just going to be really a nice support section for the Symphonion. And yeah, I think this is this is going to be a nice fit for uh, for this module. That section over there is also definitely going to benefit from this case over here. Again, this is 64 CVs and 64 gates. So I can be sending that many channels from uh, my Ableton or from Logic or whatever. When I'm not in a live jam context, I can really start working on complex uh, sequences and stuff like that and play everything out from this box over here and control it with everything that's going on over here. So, um, yeah, I think I think this is plan for it. this top case, like I said, is going to be three more voices or three more rows of those groups of voices at the start. And then the second half, I'm probably going to place two of the metropolises, metropoli, metrop <laughs> metropole thingies. And I will give them a sequential switch in the middle instead of daisy chaining them. I want to have it be optional if I want eight steps or 16 or whatever and run them in series or whatever. So I'm going to have two metropolises right there. And then from there on, I'm going to be filling in the blanks with things that I think are going to be useful in the context of this massive polyphonic corner over here. This side, I am still working on it, but my intention is that this area is going to be more sound designy. As in, this is going to be where I do the freaky stuff I'm going to do with um, more, yeah, like the more complex uh, oscillator stuff and things like that. Um, everything that happens here is more oriented at making noise and making background things and making uh, making cool bleeps and bloops, which are not really tonal, but are definitely going to have a supportive layer for everything that's going on in the rest of the system. This top case is probably still going to have some cool voices going on. Um, but yeah, the aim for this section is going to be more of a support role and more of a sound design -y thing, kind of setting the scene and providing the ambience that's needed for as a backdrop for placing all the rest of the music that's going on. I... I'm still figuring out how, I'm exact how exactly I'm going to do it, so that's going to be a next update. I already decided that I'm going to put my frequency shifters over here and some more wave folders. And probably this is also going to be where I put my, uh, the Verbos, the complex oscillator over there. And yeah, there's, there's a bunch of things that I think are going to work out very nicely over here. I am also kind of worried that my case is going to be full pretty soon and there's still a lot of stuff that needs yeah that's that's going to need to be placed somewhere so i'm still going to figure that part out but so far things are progressing nicely i think i'm happy with what it's becoming all right on that's it for now let me know how you like it if you have any suggestions or ideas for one of these sections especially for the top end of the polyphonic corner i think there's still room for some ideas over there and also for this right side of my system which is going to be the sound design case if there is cool combinations or ways to use certain uh, some of these modules or pairings that you think that absolutely deserve to belong together let me know i'll uh, work around it i'll figure it out and see if i can make it work for me thank you all for tuning in again and i'm really looking forward to your replies see ya cheers <laughs>